Hi guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Back with another build guide this week, and this one has been requested quite a few times now, so I thought I'd best get to it in the new year. As you know, I'm big on roleplaying and trying to tell a story with my characters. I'm yet to do one with a Dark Elf, so I wanted to give this a go. And he'll be dark by name, dark by nature, so I hope you enjoy it. I don't know why, but these Dark Elves with the long hair remind me of the elf in uh, Rings of Power, if you've seen it. So I'm going to call this one Adar. Hey, I'm a Dark Elf. The Nords don't like me, so do I go with Hadvar? Nope. One-handed is your way to go at the start. Make sure you pick up the key. And grab some early one-handed levels at the start. It'll help progress this a little bit quicker to begin with. But I'm going to try and keep this one as exploit-free as possible. Something a little different. I'll stop here at level 40, but go higher if you wish though. We'll be using most skills of Magicka, but Destruction mainly, to take the first perk point in that, and then put three into one-handed so our damage is much better early on. As always, loot the valuable goods early on, like the mage gear, and get practicing your flame spells on the Imperials. Once outside the caves, visit the shrine with the dead Thalmor agent, his robes will give you the destruction cost reduction enchantment, which we'll need later. Time to this. And seeing as we're over this way, we may as well loot this bandit camp for more goodies. One of them has treasure map 1. I'll do a short video on all 10 of these at some point by the way. I always talk about the first one, but then never the others. More mage robes to be had here as well. Plus a one handed skill book. When you reach the standing stones, take the thief stone to begin with, and then we'll follow our usual path over the other side of the river to collect the flawless emerald near Anise's cabin. Now over to Embershard Mine. We'll need some iron ore early on, so collect the pickaxe and then do a spot of mining. There's a good amount of loot at the end of the mine as well. Collect it all inside this room and then mine the remaining ore near the exit. You can collect the treasure map one chest as well. It's not necessary but, I mean, why change the habit of a lifetime, right? Sell any armour and weapons you don't need to the blacksmith in Riverwood, but keep any enchanted gear for now. And then inside the Riverwood trader, buy the oak flesh spell and sell him anything else you don't need jewels and so on, but keep any animal pelts you have. Now make your way to Whiterun. Once inside, turn your pelts into leather strips and then your iron ore into iron ingots. And now craft yourself a set of iron plate armour. It's around this point I had the idea of the dark spell sword by the way, and you can tell as I was wearing light armour up to this point and now I've switched, so apologies for that. I had in my head that this would be like your basic version of what you later become. You can improve this a little as well if you have any ingots left. And now find the coachman outside White Run and take a ride over to Markath. When you arrive in Markath, do a 180 and head east back down the path, and then Forest Gump your way as if you are heading out of the reach. At this fork, turn south. You might encounter a saber tooth on this path. If you do, prepare yourself with your oak flesh spell and take it down, the nasty at early levels, and then carry on up the path. I'll just show my perks here again. I've got two more points, so I'll drop one into heavy armour and then one into restoration. A spell sword uses a range of skills, so we'll be levelling lots of skill trees. But don't spread yourself too thin though, otherwise things will get difficult. Now let's head up to this orc stronghold. As we aren't an orc, we'll have to complete a little test to retrieve some gauntlets. Now the location of these is random. For me they were in Harmug style. And here are the gauntlets we're after. And now when you return to Dushnik Jarl, the orcs will let you in. I don't believe. And this is Chief Burgok, the master level one-handed trainer. Impressed me, Outlander. No one else has returned from this task before. Now I've only just started playing and already have 2,000 gold, so you can grab a few levels. But training is expensive, 
so we're going to need a way of getting some real money. So head back to Marketh and take the coach up to Solitude. Once you arrive, you basically want to head west to Pine Move Cave. It's just here on the map, quite close to Clear Pine Pond. And this location is unique as it's absolutely full of the fly Amanita mushroom and we need to do some gathering. There were a few wolves in the entrance as well so I'll just deal with those and now start picking. And now we're going to head back to Riverwood and pick up more mushrooms, the more Tapanella this time. And finally head to the marshy area south of Windhelm and no, we aren't gathering those creep cluster. Hallelujah. Instead grab the dragon's tongue flower. These are equally as common in this area and you should have a good chunk of them in no time. This little path I'm on seems to have loads. And now we're going to head to the Golden Hills Plantation, just here on the map for anyone new. West of Whiterun, southwest of Morful. Give this ghost a beating of his life, er, uh, I mean death, which will start the Unquiet Dead quest. Clue 1 is upstairs on the table. Clue 2 is downstairs in the basement. Open this secret passageway and prepare to be attacked by another angry ghost. And then finally, head outside to the well directly in front of the house to find the third clue, the skeleton of Rin. Take his toy sword and place it in his room to reunite the family and receive the key to Golden Hills Plantation. Now before we start farming, as always build the extra planters first. Chop some firewood at the block here and then mine the stone. The pickaxe we collected earlier will come in handy here. And now you can build the additional planter space. There's a ton of other stuff to do here as well which we'll get to shortly. Now we have our planter space set up, we should have 44 slots outside. Plant 13 dragon's tongue, 13 fly amanita and 18 mora tapinella and this should yield us 52 of the first two ingredients and then 54 more at Apinella. And when done, go inside and wait 24 hours for them to grow. I can't remember who shared these ingredients but thank you. I know a few of you have had trouble with the creep cluster plant. It's a bit of a pain to farm it. It's good to mix things up though, I don't want to just produce the same guides over and over again. So now we've waited one day. The first time is one day by the way, after that it's three days, unless you replant everything. And now just go collect all your ingredients. I repeated this I think 8 times until I had tons of these ingredients. But I'm going to store most of them in the chest upstairs. Only keep about 100 for now. Normally if you watch my guides I level alchemy in one go. But we're going to do it in steps this time. So let's combine these 3 ingredients. And do this until you have a good stack of about 10 to 15 potions or so and have leveled up again. My last perk point was in Alchemist, and this one I'll put into Alchemist as well. And now fast travel back to Whiterun. Once here we're going to sell our potions to Arcadia, plus Bellathor. We also want to buy from Bellathor 5 straw bales. And we also need some iron ingots so we can create 2 hinges, 3 iron fittings, 1 lock and a pack of 10 nails. I didn't have a corundum ingot for the lock though, but the blacksmith should have one. And now before we head back to the farm, let's pick Greetings up a follower. Fendel will do. Please take this. Lead the way. When at the farm, ask Fendel to be your steward. steward. He's going to help make study. us rich. And now you can build all the other farm buildings. You'll also need 19 firewood and 9 quarried stone, but this can be gathered on site. Now with the gold we acquired from our first round of potions, hire some farm hands. These are 500 gold, plus also get some livestock, and this is 600 in total, 300 for a cow, 200 for some goats, and 100 for the chickens. And eventually you'll get a message saying talk to your steward about collecting the day's profit. 622 gold I received this time, and this is going to be our main source of income now guys, a real cash cow this place is. You also get ingredients and food from your farm which is cool, it'll be in the pantry inside the house. Now that is set up, go
go back and make some more potions until you level up again and this time grab the next alchemy perk, Physician. And repeat this step of selling your potions to anyone that will have them. Arcadia wants more, yep. You too, Belathor. The Khajiits will even take some off your hands as well, God bless them. Now I purposefully stayed away from the plantation for just a couple of days to see what we get. 3,110 gold, pretty nice. So now let's head back up to Chief Burguk and buy more one-handed training. And this is basically how we're going to step level alchemy and one-handed guys. Make your next batch of potions. I have two perk points now, one levelling up one-handed with Burguk and one just now. So I'll put a point into Alchemist and then a point into Benefactor. I'll cover the perks later, but they'll be the same 7 perks I normally put into Alchemy. Just fill up Alchemist now. And this is a slower method than my other way of making money, which is basically to exploit the Dawnstar chest until speech is at 100 and perked, and then do the save attack reload trick so you can sell potions very quickly. But this way is glitch free, so it's up to you how you want to approach it. Now that we've got our method for levelling Alchemy and one handed, let's also start gathering other ingredients for levelling skills. Our first location we want is Halted Stream Mine just north of Whiterun, and this is a great early game location I think. It's basically just full of iron ore, I think it has 16 veins in total. There's also tons of loot in this place, but the main one we have come for is this, the Transmute Mineral Ore Spell. Ah, not this again. Anyway, yeah lots of iron ore in here. I'm up to 55 pieces now and I think I only had a couple before. The second location is Fort Fellhammer, just south of Dawnstar. You'll have to deal with quite a few bandits here, but once they're dead, get mining. There are 10 ore veins here, plus a load more ore lying about. I found 4 in this little cart. Plus a few more on the floor and then more in a cart a bit further down into the mine. I got about 40 pieces from this location in total. And the last location is one we've already been to, Embershard Mine. Now you'll need to wait like 28 to 30 in-game days for all veins to respawn. They can be buggy though. I'll just show a method I have for resetting them as this one isn't respawning for me. Basically just exit the location. I'll speed this up here so you can say I only turn around outside and haven't edited anything. And now it's reset. It's super weird. I don't know why it does it. Well I do. It's just Skyrim and it's endless bugs. <laughs> So yeah, those three locations should yield you a like 100 iron ore every month. Now around this level you should receive a note from Skyrim's favourite postman, and the note is the Warrior's Challenge, which is basically an invitation to come claim Skyrim's greatest Nordic longhouse. Yep, we'll be there. So head here and let the current owner know you have received her letter, and now prepare yourself for a fight. She can be quite tough, but she'll walk up and pick up her gear, so you've got time to prepare for it. Now throw everything you've got at her. She does carry this cool Nordic sword which is definitely better than my mace so I'll take that. And she had a ring of sneaking which I think is random but that's lucky as well as we'll need that enchantment later. But now the Hendraheim home is yours. For now use this place just to store your gathered iron ore. This house is a forge which we'll use later. We'll need 800 iron ore in total, which is a lot to gather from the mines, so at this point you should be generating quite a bit of gold from your farm, plus selling potions, so now I'd also start picking iron ore up from stores and blacksmiths on your travels. Also start buying petty and lesser filled soul gems. It's been about one month since my last visit to Golden Hills as well, so let's see what we've accumulated. 14,306 gold, pretty nice. And now continue to rotate through that method really. Potions level alchemy, gather your iron ore and soul gems, and buy your one handed training. Now for the purpose of this guide, I'm going to stop at level 80. Burgup can take you up to level 90, but 80 is where we can fully max the base of the one handed skill tree, which is what I wanted for this build. So again, it's up to you if you want to continue. And now that I'm happy where my one handed skill is, I'm going to spam alchemy all the way up to 100 now. And this is how I do it in my other videos right from the start.
Once that's done, let's grab our seventh and final perk point in the alchemy skill tree, Alchemist 5. I'll also grab a few one-handed perks now through the middle of the skill tree. And now we can get rid of the Thief Stone and grab the Warrior Stone. I have at this point 806 iron ore, and I think 300 of this is from the mines, and the other 500 I've bought from shopkeepers along the way or random ore veins. So what we're going to do now is grind the transmute spell and turn all this iron ore into gold ore. You can do this as you go on by the way, I've only left it until now as I want to try and show this in quite a methodical way. When you have all your gold ore, sleep in the bed for the well rested bonus. And if you want to travel faster with the ore, just drop it all and then you can pick it up and kind of just run with it. And now smelt your 800 gold ore pieces into 400 gold ingots. And now firstly, craft yourself a few gold necklaces, as we'll use these in enchanting, and the rest of the ingots can be turned into gold rings. And these 400 gold ingots will be enough to get you above level 80 smithing, which unlocks the perks that we want. The first main one we want is Arcane Blacksmith, and then the second one is Ebony Smithing, which unlocks at level 80. If you're over encumbered, store a load of the rings. I kept 300 of them, as we'll use these for enchanting. And now for the enchanting part. I've acquired on my travels 39 common soul gems. Just grab some of these in case we needed them. 114 lesser soul gems, 112 petty soul gems, and 10 grand soul gems. We may need more than 10 eventually, this is just what I could afford. Go back to the standing stones and this time pick up the mage stone. And then find a bed to rest in in white run. And now it's time to disenchant any enchanted gear we have acquired that we don't need. And this is where that ring of sneaking we found comes in handy. Basically you either want water breathing or sneaking if enchanting rings, as those will give the biggest boosts. For daggers which I normally showcase, it's banishing. So for the next bit, just enchant your rings with sneak. Start with your petty soul gems, and then your lesser ones, and then common if you need them. And just do this all the way up to level 100, easy peasy. In terms of the perks, we want 8 in enchanting, 5 in the base, and then fill up the middle of the tree as shown here. And now we've got our enchanting set up, time to grab some gear. And what we want are all skills of magicka except conjuration. We want alchemy, smithing and one handed. Any you've already found on your travels you don't need to buy again. I already have destruction and smithing I think. Although I've bought destruction again here which wasn't very clever but oh well. Yes. And also find yourself an alchemist and buy yourself a blacksmith's elixir. The 50% one. It doesn't need to be this one but it's, it's better if it is. And lastly, pick up another chest plate and another helmet. Now enchant a ring, amulet, chest and helmet with fortify restoration and alteration. And then a second ring, amulet, chest and helmet with fortify destruction and illusion. Restoration and alteration make sure it's on your iron plate set. And if you follow these steps, each piece should say 25% reduction. It's very important it's 25% as you want all spell costs gone for this part. Now head to a blacksmith and take your elixir and use 4 iron ingots to improve your iron plate armour and you're about to take some punishment from the giants. Uh, that went wrong, can we do a take 2 please? Here we go, so the method here is use an alteration flesh spell and then dual cast restoration and let the giants hit you. And what we'll be doing is simultaneously levelling heavy armour, restoration and alteration. The giants will hurt you though, so you need to manage this carefully. And drop the difficulty if you want to do for this bit. Until at least you've got some perks in as you go, as it gets easier the longer you do this. But as you see here, I'm often in retreat mode, trying to manage that health bar. And our aim here is to get to heavy armour 80, and at least alteration and restoration 40. Here we are. And at this point we can max out the base of the heavy armour tree. I've also taken the well fitted perk. 
And in restoration, I've got recovery, regeneration, and respite. Respite is crucial, I feel, for Magicka builds with no stamina. It's such a good perk for mages. Now go and buy the Muffle spell from Farangar, and then take up the coach to Winterhold. And here join the college, and then after Tolfdia's first lesson, buy the Telekinesis spell from him. And now let's go for a walk. Equip the set which reduces destruction and illusion spell to zero, and start spam casting Muffle on your travels. We're heading to Hobbsfall Cave, just here on the map, not too far of a walk. And once here you can continue to spam Muffle all the way to 100. Now enter the cave, but be careful in here. It's full of necromancers and they all use frost which slow you down, it's super annoying. In the central room with all the burnt corpses, find the ancient tome chest in the corner and grab all the spells from it. I didn't bother fighting everyone in here, I just run like hell. Once outside it's time to level destruction and alteration. It's up to you which order you do it in. For alteration, use a telekinesis spell on an item and fast travel across the map. And this usually will get you to 100 in one go. And now do the other one. And for destruction I use Unbounded Storms. Again dual cast this spell and do the same, fast travel across the map. I usually do this to a location without any friendly NPCs by the way, definitely not a town, as you might end up killing someone. And doing this twice should level it to 100 though depending on how far you travel. And now we've jumped from 41 to 51 and we've got Illusion, Alteration and Destruction at level 100. I'll show all my perks at the end now by the way. And now let's get our main gear for this build. Head over to Marketh and inside the Silver Blood Inn. Enter the room on the right hand side and read the Crypt of the Heart draft to start the quest. This quest starts on the bridge near Dushnik Jarl. It'll ask you to follow a ghost up the hill, but you can just run past it. It'll keep respawning ahead of you. And at the top, take care of the Forsworn and read the note. And now go after the heart. I recommend approaching this location from Sol Yun's sinkhole, by the way, which is to the east. The reason being is you can drop directly down onto it from here and avoid having to fight through an entire army of Forsworn. The Hargrave in here is a bit of a beast though, so be ready. And once the witches and the Hargraven are dealt with, claim the heart from the altar. And now you can scale the wall back up again to avoid the Force Worn. Now there are two options here, either purify the heart first or just place it on the grave, and both yield different options. And I'm going to choose the second option. It fits with the story I wanted to tell with this character. But also this version has a one-handed enchantment on the chest piece, which is unique I think, so we'll go with that. The knight does attack this way though. But your reward at the end is the ebony spell knight armor set, a really powerful in-game set. Probably one of my favourites from the AE update actually. And now for our corrupted knight's weapon, also in Marketh, start the House of Horrors quest by talking to this vigilant. I do like this quest, one of the original Daedric quests. I felt it fit very well with the storyline. Your, your first task is you are ordered to kill the Vigilant by Molag Bal, which my Dark Elf did willingly. See this quest to its conclusion to receive the Mace of Molag Bal, a truly terrifying weapon which will sometimes cause NPC guards to comment saying, that mace, keep it away from me. Now it's time to make a few finishing touches to our gear. Find an enchanter's elixir from an alchemist, it's important it's the 25% version to start with. Take this and then on a necklace, ring, braces and helmet, add the alchemy enchantment. Equip these four pieces and make a fortify enchanting potion. The best versions of this use either Droogwax or Stoneflower Petals. 
combined with a base game ingredient like a blue butterfly wing. And just repeat this step a few times. And this is basically alchemy slash enchanting looping. I did do a guide on how to make a crafting suit recently, which if you want to make this build super OP, I'd recommend following. But for the purpose of making this, I haven't gathered those pieces and only done this loop a few times. But once you're ready and happy and have pushed the percentages high up as far as you want to go, make your crafting set. Oh, to do this, enchant a necklace, ring and gauntlets with fortify alchemy and fortify smithing. And then enchant a chest piece with fortify smithing and then a helmet with fortify alchemy. I'm also going to enchant a second ring and a second amulet with fortify one handed and fortify destruction as these will form part of the gear for this build. You'll need grand or black soul gems to do all this by the way, don't use any smaller ones. Now equip your final crafting set and combine blister War with gold canner, another rare curious ingredient. This makes a fortify smithing potion. The only potion I really use for this type of build is fortify destruction. All these ingredients here can make this. Steel Blue Entoloma, Daedra Venin and Combrit are all rare Curios ingredients, but only the last two actually provide a larger boost. I'll just demonstrate this. So Glow Dust and Beehive Husk are two base game ingredients, and this gives us a 180% boost. Ash Creek Cluster and Steel Blue Entoloma also give us a 180% boost. Combrit and Glowing Mushroom give us a 216% boost, and Daedra Venin and Wisp Wrappings also give a 216% boost. So it's up to you what you use. Those ingredients are much much rarer but are better if you can find them. Now take your Smithing Potion and upgrade your Ebony Spell Knight Armour with 4 Ebony Ingots, and then upgrade the Mace of Molag Bell with a 5th Ebony Ingot. I did push Smithing to 100 for this bit by the way, just to get better boosts. You can push way higher than this by the way if you follow my crafting suit guide, but the mace now does 344 damage. And the armour has a rating of 1410, quite a bit higher than the armour cap which is funny. And for this kind of build I recommend the Lord Stone, it's probably the best stone there is I think. I use it all the time, it boosts magic resistance by 25% so it's really powerful and it stacks with others. And now for the spells. As we are a Dark Elf spell sword, we'll use Fire Magic, so buy Fire Rune and Incinerate. And then for Restoration, the best healing spell we can get, for me it's Close Wounds. And for Illusion, any you fancy really, Rout, Rally, Pacify, Invisibility, Frenzy, they all work really. And then from Alteration, take Ebony Flesh. And that's the build more or less set up and ready, so I'll just show you the perks quickly. We are now at level 53, so 52 perks in total. We've got 8 in heavy armour, and conditioning is what I'd be going for next I think. Nothing in block or two handed. One handed we have 10 perks, the 8 from before plus I've put 2 into bone breaker for extra mace damage, and I'd be looking to pick up the third perk point here eventually. Alchemy is the same 7 as before. Illusion currently nothing, although eventually I'd recommend filling the middle and right of this skill tree to make your illusion spells more powerful, basically all of these. Nothing in Conjuration, Destruction we have 5 in, and eventually I'd be picking up Intense Flames. Restoration we have 4 in, and next I'd be getting the second perk in Recovery. Alteration we've got 5 in, and 3 boost magic resistance, and next I'd be looking to get Stability and Atronic. There are 8 in Enchanting, the same as earlier, and Smithing has 5 in, again no changes here, and that should equal 52. Now as I say this kind of build, you want to utilise lots of forms of magic, so equip your favourites, but Destruction and One Handed will likely be your main. It's an attack is the best form of defence kind of build, which is really fun. Just go to town practising cycling different spells, blowing stuff up, causing mayhem. Unbounded Flames is great. You can get some great kill cams with Incinerate as well if you get a direct hit, just blasting bandits off towers and cliffs.
I hope you enjoyed this build guide. I'm Mike the Gaming Dad and I'll see you next time.